Hi and welcome to Neat AI. So I've wanted to code up asteroids and plug in a neural net for quite some time now. Asteroids is an old arcade game from the 80s where you fly a little spaceship around shooting at rocks in order to blow them up. An alien ship would appear at random points in the game and shoot at you. And I believe the best score ever achieved for the game was in the 40 million plus range. So I coded it up and plugged in a standard neural net with five hidden nodes to see what kind of gameplay and strategies would emerge over the generations to defeat the game. As you can see, Lots of different approaches were tried at various stages. Overall, it seemed to prefer a defensive approach, but occasionally it would go after the asteroids. So in this video, I'll describe some of the key elements of coding the game, some of the mechanics behind it, the type of neural net employed, and how it learned over time to get better and better scores. The first thing I did when creating the game was to create a class for the world and one for an asteroid. When the world class is initialized, it then initializes five large size asteroids. These come in three sizes, small, medium and large. And when a large asteroid is destroyed, two medium ones appear and then two small ones. Typically they're depicted on screen as circles, but I wanted the game to be more aligned with the original classic. So I added in some vertices to give them a more rock-like appearance. Next was the ship. Again, I created a class for this and it needs to be able to move about the world and shoot the rocks. Rotating the ship can be challenging, so I've added some extra detail. I have a draw ship function, which is called hundreds of times second, it calculates the ship corners and draws a line between them. Effectively, it's a little wireframe model and uses the equations shown here. It needs the ship bearing, which is a number between 0 and 360 degrees, and the x and y location of the ship. The final thing needed was the bullets. These are again separated into their own class and take their bearing from the ships when fired. When they collide with an asteroid, it gets removed, and two more take its place. The inputs to the neural net have been kept simple. The first is the angle to the closest asteroid. This will be zero when the ship is pointing straight at it, and 180 degrees when it's pointing in the other direction. This is followed by the distance to the asteroid's surface, the ship's bearing, and the bias input, which is always set to 1. The main design decision then was, do I go with one world and 30 ships? As I did in the Flappy Bird video. The main difference being, of course, that the birds couldn't influence each other in any way. Here it's different. The ships, while they can't see each other, are all shooting at the same asteroids, with predictable results. But this is simply of no use when it comes to getting an individual pilot trained up as an efficient asteroid hunter. So instead, I need the population of ships to all play their own game at the same time. This ensures they can influence each other and allows each generation to get fitter and develop the pilots to become more efficient asteroid hunters. You can see that if I display all the games that are underway at the same time, then it's just a jumbled mess on screen. So instead, when I run the code, I only display one of the games. When the pilot crashes, I move on to the next pilot, still alive, and display what they're doing. Okay, so let's begin training. Ship 1 from the first generation is now on screen and the pilot's brain is shown on the right. Once he crashes, the next ship that's still alive will be shown and that'll repeat until they've all crashed. The starting weights and the connections of course are all random for the first generation. Ship 15 is the last one still alive here, so once it crashes, we'll produce the next generation of pilots. Creating the next generation is done via a crossover approach. And all this simply means is that two ships are chosen at random to be the parents of a member of the next generation. Parent selection is done at random, with the chance of being chosen as a parent is directly proportional to a ship's final fitness value. With more fit ships, much more likely to be chosen. But in theory, any ship can be a parent. I use what's known as a roulette wheel selection for this. The child structure is going to be exactly the same as the parents, of course, but the weights of the connections are assigned randomly from either parent, and this process is repeated until the next generation is fully populated. The final step before the new generation can be let loose is to slightly mutate the weights of their connections. So I run through the connection genome array of all the ships and assign a 90% chance of mutating the connection weights by between 10 and 50%. It's these mutations that allow the ships to evolve as mutations that don't work are generally removed from the gene pool within a few generations. But those that do result in fitter ships and are more likely to be passed on to the next generation. 
And through this process with the right fitness function and over many generations, the ship population evolves the ability to survive in its environment and gets very good at avoiding the asteroids. So just a heads up before we get into the next generation that next week's video will feature a neat AI neural net which produces a couple of killer pilots. So if you're interested in that, please do subscribe. So fast forwarding through a few generations, we can see that as each generation is mutated slightly, we get pilots who approach the issue of survival in slightly different ways. And that's what's occurring here, as it was in Flappy Birds population is simply trying to survive in its environment and I steer the mechanism for that by finding a suitable fitness function. I had to try a few different options to get the type of behavior I wanted. If I just used the score as a fitness function, the pilots tended to resort to just rotating as fast as possible and spraying bullets everywhere. That tended to be the best option in the short term and because this type of neural net can't speciate, it generally wasn't able to branch out and explore alternatives. Now, that wasn't what I wanted. I was after a more nuanced approach, so instead of using the score, which you see displayed in the top left as the fitness function, I used something else. As I only tell the pilot about the nearest asteroid, I wanted it to shoot at that one, as it's the most immediate threat. So for the fitness function, I decided to award a point every time the pilot hit the closest asteroid, and deduct a point every time they hit anything else. And that certainly had an effect on their behavior. Scooting away from the closest asteroids, not shooting continuously, actively driving forward while spraying bullets or some combination of those. Pilots that actively tried to turn and aim at the closest asteroids also emerged, but never really seemed to pull it off consistently. On the right is the neural net, four inputs, five hidden neurons, and three outputs. The connections are displayed as red for negative weights and white for positive. The thickness of the connection lines being proportional to the size of the weight. The output from the neural net nodes is a number between minus 1 and 1. Turn left, the first output neuron must be less than minus 0.95. Turn right, it must be greater than 0.95. The second output neuron determines if the pilot shoots or not, and it needs to be greater than 0.95 for that to happen. And the last one controls thrust, and you guessed it, must be above 0.95 for the engines to fire. And you can see the inputs changing as the ship rotates and the asteroids come close and move away. And it's important to note that I also have elitism switched on. That simply means that the top two pilots from each generation get cloned into ships one and two, and they're not mutated in any way. This provides some continuity in those genomes which were successful and ensures they survive untouched for at least another generation. Overall, this neural net did a decent job. It never really dominated the game like the neat neural net I'll feature in the next video that produced a pilot who simply destroyed every asteroid that came near it, and it did it in just 12 generations. In the meantime, here's a short montage of the pilot's maneuvers, and if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great, as it really helps.